Robert Middleton. Brought to you by... sure was fun while it lasted. We'll miss you. I feel the same way about it. You know, this was the best carpool I've ever been in, even if I was the only one with a car. It won't be the same driving to work with somebody else. No. I still don't know why you have to give it up just because your sister's coming to live with you. Uh, well, look, if you're gonna stop being a playboy, you have to quit hanging around with the bunnies. <laughs> so long. Thanks for never collecting for the gas. <laughs> Oh, I collected. <laughs> morning, morning. Good morning, Miss Adams. Your coffee, Professor. Thank you, Miss Adams. You're welcome. <laughs> Bill Muller's a happy man. <laughs> loves life. Oh, loves oh, flowers. Oh, loves his work. Really loves it. But Mrs. Bill Muller hates it. He brings home impossible stains. I can't get them out. Today's a whole new day, Mrs. Muller. Today you get out the impossible with Bioactive Amaze. New laundry discovery that soaks impossible stains out of colored clothes without taking out the color. Not a bleach, not a detergent. Microphotography shows how Amaze works. Biological action lifts stains off a whole new way without harming fabrics, without fading colors. Hey, the calf's liver came out. And the flower stayed in. It's a whole new day, Mrs. Muller. You've got bioactive amaze. Now you can get out impossible stains. Miss Malloy? Good morning, Professor Tate. What do we got today? Staff meeting, 10 a.m., lunch, Multicron consultants, 12.30, meet sister at airport, 2 p.m. That's tomorrow. That's today. She was able to get an earlier flight. Oh, boy, I better get flying myself. This puts me a day behind schedule. Take a letter, Miss Malloy. Um, uh, darling. <laughs> darling? Yeah. Darling, there comes a time in the life of every young scientist when he must put love aside and concentrate on more uh, intellectual pursuits. We must both reprogram our emotions and deactivate our, um, our, um, Circuits. Love Alec. Uh, no, no. No love. Uh, yours truly, Alec. Does this go to anyone in particular? No, just send it off as a form letter. <laughs> You'll find the young lady's names in here. Professor, this letter doesn't sound like you. Well, you're known around the water cooler as the swinger of Magnet Dynamics. Well, uh, that's all changed, Miss Malloy. I mean, now that my sister's coming to live with me, I've got to create the proper image. You see, 15-year-old girls are very prudish when it comes to older brothers. Now, they may scream and gush over swingers, but they don't want one in the family. I've programmed Clara here to scan over 120,000 teenage problems a minute, come up with the right answer every time. Clara? You mean old 1088? Yeah, yeah. Motherly name for a motherly function. Stands for Computing Linear Accelerator Random Analyzer. I don't mind telling you, Miss Malloy. Without old Clara here to guide me, I would have been scared stiff trying to raise Bunny on my own. 
So you mean the swinger has to slow down to a wolf? Yeah. That's Clara's advice. Here, I'll show you. Now, reel A here is an accurate account of the way I have lived for the past three years. Now, let's ask Clara. Is this the kind of brother that a 15-year-old sister can look up to? <laughs> No. Real B is my new way of life. Huh? Yes, and that's the way it's going to be, Miss Malloy. From now on in, straight and narrow for Alec Tate. Professor Tate's office. Oh, it's your landlord. Hello, Cappy. What's on your mind? Say, there's a fellow here from the telephone company. He says you want an unlisted number? Uh, oh, yeah. Let him in, Cappy. I gotta keep the hotline cooled off for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's any way to get an unlisted house. <laughs> of all the stupid, idiotic... Hey, why don't you... Now, wasn't that silly of little old me? Uh, no. No, no, no. These things do happen, you know, all the time. Uh, I should have watched where I was going. I mean, I was in front of you. That puts me in the way, doesn't it? Oh, you are, gentlemen. But the bump was entirely my fault. Uh, did I shake you up? Yeah, yes, you did shake me up. <laughs> well, if there's any damage, I'm fully insured. Uh-huh. Wouldn't you like my name and address? I'd love it. <laughs> but I'm programmed in another direction. How old is your brother? Thirty. Oh, an antique. Thirty isn't so old. Thirty-five, that's when you're over the hill. What does he do for a living? He's head of Research and Development of Magna Dynamics Corporation. An egghead in a think factory, huh? Bev, you make him sound terrible. Alex really quite handsome and attractive. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't met you. Complete strangers and fate put us on the same plane. Double fate. We'll be living in La Jolla together. We will be landing in five minutes. Please fasten your seat belts and observe the no smoking sign. Goodness, how do you act towards an older brother you haven't seen in ten months? No sweat. You just say hi. Then he'll look at you and say, my, how you've grown. Alec, isn't that corny? My, how you've grown. Have <laughs> yes, you have. You've certainly grown. Oh, buddy, I want you to meet my cousin Sherry. And I want you to meet my brother Alec. This is Bev. Uh, hello, Bev. Hello, Bev. Well, hello again. A college professor, my. Well, no, not actually. I work at Magna Dynamics. It's a think factory. I just knew there was something different about you. Have you two met before? Oh, we, uh, we kind of bumped into each other a while ago. Yes, we did. And now that your sister and my cousin turn out to be little old friends, we might be seeing a lot more of each other. Well, maybe we can all get together some night for dinner? Yeah. Uh, no, no. No, I don't eat dinner anymore. <laughs> I mean, my work is going to be taking up a lot of my time. It's too bad. Well, uh, my bunny, we uh, had uh, uh, better go get your bags now. Goodbye, Miss... Uh... Uh, Ferguson. Ferguson. Hello. I never realized professors could be so adorable. Just got to get Daddy to buy me a think factory. <laughs> Bunny, I want you to meet our landlord. Captain Horatio Skidmore, U.S. Navy, retired. I am not retired. Uh, sorry. I'm on a temporary detached leave of absence. That's true. Those land lovers in the Pentagon find out what a mistake they've made. They never learn. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Thank you, Captain Skidmore. Uh, you just call me Cappy, because I'll be darned if I'm going to call you Miss Tate. Okay, Captain. Well, how do you like the SS Bunny? Golly, thanks. I never had a boat named after me. But you still haven't. It's a bird bath. <laughs> I told you he was quite a character. Now, unless you want your rent raised, I think it would be wise not to call an officer who is on a temporary detached leave of absence a character. I'm very sorry, Captain. Well, you should be. My Navy record is darn near perfect. 
I only lost one ship in my entire career. Golly, you had a ship sunk from under you? No, just lost. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion at the end of the war. <laughs> hey, Alex, I'll help you with some of that stuff. Can you? Yeah, I, I wish you would. You know, I got to get back to work. Hmm? Oh, well, you know how busy I am. Oh, yeah, yeah, busy, busy. <laughs> work, work, work. That's all your brother ever thinks of. Yeah. Alex, don't you ever relax? Have fun? My work is my fun. Nose to the grindstone. That's his philosophy. Absolutely. Uh, how do you like the view, Bunny? Gee, it's terrific. You can see the whole coastline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you see it from inside. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, I'm in dry dock over the garage. If you want anything, just yell out. I will, Cappy. Nice going, Cappy. Nose to the grindstone. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I can explain it, Bunny. At, at Magna Dynamics, our only job is to think. Now, we pose hypothetical problems in national security and in national politics, and we try to solve these problems before they happen. But do you have to work all the time? Um, well, a scientist just can't uh, turn off his mind at 5 o'clock. Oh, that's them. Scientists. Gee, all my girlfriends have brothers that are athletes, always feeling their muscles. You've got a mind. You want to feel my brain? <laughs> Hi, I brought over some Watusi records. We'll have to play them in my bedroom. Alex working. You sure got a nice pad here, Professor. Pad? Must be great for parties. Oh, oh, that kind of pad. I'm more familiar with those for missiles. doesn't do something pretty soon he's gonna wind up to be a senior citizen before he's 31. Boy, is he far gone. I wish we could get him together with your cousin. That'd loosen him up. Oh, she could make him come apart all right. Might not be so easy. Even Cappy mentioned how Al keeps his nose to the grindstone all the time. Maybe we could arrange a chance meeting. Like where? Yeah, where? That's just the problem. Yeah, well, I better be going home now. We'll figure something out in the morning. Yeah. Let's sleep on it. No, no, you can't call me back. I'm in a booth, Candace. <laughs> good night, buddy. Uh, good night, Professor. Good night, now. Don't work too hard. Right. Good night. Good night. Hey, Bunny. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, tomorrow's Saturday. How'd you like to go to the beach? The beach? Yeah. The beach? I couldn't think of a better place. That's really good idea. Oh, stop it, you're kidding. It was just a simple suggestion. I gotta talk to Clara about that. Now beauty begins for the clean crowd with a clean look. Lux clean. From Lux Beauty Soap. Lux clean skin. Beauty is only skin deep. Lux clean skin. All the more reason for looking after your skin. And a beautiful skin is a clean skin. A luxe clean skin. Not a harsh, scrubbed look, but a gentle, mild, beautiful clean. The kind of clean you can only get from the gentle, mild, beautifying lather of luxe beauty soap. Luxe clean skin. So when you're made up for a special occasion, or at home in your everyday cosmetics. Make sure your skin is gently, mildly, beautifully clean. Lux Clean Skin. Join the clean crowd. Get Lux Beauty Soap. Yeah, this'll do. You know, I often come down here to develop ideas. Maybe you'll get 
get one today. This is a nice spot. Yes, it is. Bev, I can't imagine why you were so insistent about coming to the beach. Sherry, look who's here. I'm glad you were so insistent. Hi, huh, Professor. Hi, Bev. Sherry, let's join them. All right. Alec, you remember Bev's cousin, don't you? Yes, yes. Hello. Hi. How about a cold drink, Bev? Can't wait. It's so nice seeing y'all again, Professor. Yeah, well, it's uh, nice seeing all of you. I mean, you all. Whatever are you doing with that umbrella? What umbrella? The one you hold it, silly. Oh, oh, well, I was gonna, gonna stick it in the sand here. You stuck it in your foot. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Professor T, I've been thinking and thinking, and I finally figured out why you've been so standoffish every time we've met. You have? Yes. You're just plain sharp. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that's always been a problem of mine. My parents were that way. You've been missing quite a lot. Girls can be fun. They can? Yes, indeed. They can be very interesting once you get to know them. Well, uh, uh, how does a man like me, I mean, shy and old-fashioned, how does he get started? You, you know, begin. You just talk to a girl, like we're doing right now. You mean we've begun? Mm. Well, it's very enjoyable, I guess. What do we do besides talk? Would you mind uh, rubbing on some of this suntan lotion? Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Professor, on me. Oh, sure, isn't this kind of intimate? I mean, we're just getting to know each other. And, uh, I mean, my folks didn't rub each other with suntan lotion until their 10th anniversary. If you aren't the cutest little old naive maverick I ever did meet, it wouldn't surprise me if you'd never even kissed a girl before in your whole entire life. Is it exciting? There's only one way to find out. Uh, you sure you don't mind? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Tate, hmm? are you sure you've never kissed a girl before? Well, why didn't I do it right? Oh, it was beautiful and honest and tender. Well, thank you very much. I didn't know it would be so easy. You know why it was easy, Alec? Why? Because you're in love. I am. And so am I. It was love at first sight. It happens all the time. Look out. Now, wait a minute, Sherry. I was only practicing. Oh, you poor darling. I know how shy and bashful they are. And I know the question you're just dying to ask me. What's that? Will you be my fiancé? Will you be my fiancé? Of course I will, darling. Now you said it. Now, wasn't that easy? Sherry, honey, I was only practicing. Isn't it wonderful? We're engaged. Oh, boy. <laughs> More input, Miss Malloy. What's next? Financial report. Ferguson Petroleum. Barrels per day, price per barrel, profit per barrel day. All right, break it down for me, Clara. Run it through that little random access memory of yours. More. Uh, Ferguson Cotton? Yeah, Cotton. Ferguson Cattle? Ferguson Cattle. Ferguson Pipeline. Pipe. Oh, wow, the old man floated. Does he have a son? I wish he didn't have a daughter. <laughs> Sorry, Clara. I'm going to have to speed up your scanners a few milliseconds. Money bag is due here in a couple of hours. Yes? Would you mind telling Professor Tank that his little fiance is here? And a big old father. <laughs> I think he's expecting you. Professor Tate, your little old fiance is here? And uh, her big old rich father. <laughs> All right. Would you go in, please? Honey, how'd she know I was rich? You been bragging about our money? Not a word, Daddy. Why, this boy just loves me for myself. <laughs> Alex, this is Daddy. Well, well. How do you do, Miss Ferguson? Delighted to hear the good news, son. Makes your father mighty happy to know that his daughter's finally found the right man. Well, thank you very much, sir. And I have. <laughs> well, I'll go and leave you two alone so as you can get better acquainted. Right. I'll see you tonight at the airport, Alec. The airport? Oh, the Ferguson plane will be waiting. We're flying right back to the ranch for a combination barbecue engagement party and beef jerky festival. And Daddy's gonna let us keep the plane as an engagement present. Isn't he a doll? Keep the plane? 
We're gonna get rid of it anyway. It needs a wash. <laughs> uh, very good, sir. Bye, you two. So long now. Well, uh, here, sit right down here, Mr. Ferguson. Thank you, sir. There you go. Uh, that's, uh, that's very nice of you, sir. I've always wanted my own plane. Oh, glad to do it for you, sir. That new jet you bought must have cost about $943,682.47. That's quite a gift. Thank you very much, sir. Well, now, that's not exactly the plane I had in mind. It isn't? No, I... I was thinking on giving you my old jet. Oh, your old one. Well, only had it for a year. Well, still, it's a used jet. <laughs> well, thanks anyway, sir. Here, let me do that. There we go. Yeah, what ranch are we going to for the party, sir? I hope it's the Flying F. 50,682 head of cattle, averaging 750 pounds on the hoof for a market value of $7,847,625. Uh... <laughs> or is it the Lubbock spread, sir? Annual profit, $146,922. Cotton. That's where the money is, huh, sir? Uh, here, sir, let me do that. Son, you seem to know an awful lot about my financial status. I'm not as rich as some people think. Oh, uh, don't be modest, sir. I'm proud and happy to be the future son-in-law of a man whose net profits from 55 through 64 averaged over half a million dollars per annum. After taxes. Uh, with the exception of 57, where those dry wells threw us for a loss of $943,682.25. But we're not worried about this year, are we, Dad? Galveston's gushing. Son, I want to ask you a straight question. I want a straight answer. I'll do my best, sir. You marrying Sherry because her father's a man worth almost $75 million? Uh, 76, sir. You're almost as a million short. <laughs> I'll answer the question. Well, I'm very fond of Sherry, sir, and, uh... You're also fond of her money, right, son? Well, I'm not prejudiced, sir. I have no objection to people being rich. In other words, you're a fortune hunter. Well, now that you know, sir, I, I guess the engagement's off. Not by a long shot. The engagement is on. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, a fortune hunter can make the best type of a husband. I should know. <laughs> Didn't have a plug nickel when I married Cherry's mother. Uh, but Mr. Ferguson, <laughs> he had all the money, but I knew how to take care of it for. And Look, you're going to do the same for Sherry. But, Dad, welcome to the family, son. See you at the plane. Your plane? If I could just have one more moment. <laughs> you and your big fat oscilloscope. <laughs> but Mirage outperforms wax in many important ways. Look, here are two waxes. Now, see how clear Mirage is? Perfectly clear, clearer than any wax. Now let's look at Mirage on a floor and see how much better it is. After five coats, these leading waxes have darkened. Now look at Mirage, still perfectly clear. How tough is Mirage? You can wash it up to 30 times. Compare, this wax, shine gone, this wax, some shine, but Mirage still shining. How do you remove it? Easily, with a little ammonia. New Mirage, clearer than wax, stays clearer than wax, shines through 30 detergent washings and keeps floors beautiful. Try Mirage, it outperforms floor wax. Happy, and my best friend's gonna be my cousin. One step at a time, Bunny. First, Mr. Ferguson's gotta approve of your brother. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Bunny, what's the Ferguson's phone number? 459-1099. Four, five, four, Alec, do you think that cousins Ev and I are too old to be flower girls at the wedding? Stop calling her your cousin and the wedding's off. As soon as I reach Sherry, I'm gonna tell her. Alec, what happened? Didn't your father like you? He's crazy about me. If I don't marry her, he might adopt me. <laughs> you can't do this to Sherry or to me. It's just too embarrassing. This has nothing to do with you, Bunny. Why should you be embarrassed? I arranged the whole deal. I set it up. You what? At the beach. I brought you two together. Why would you do a thing like that? Well, I did it for your own good. So you'd meet some girls. Bunny, I can meet my own girl. No, you can't. You're just a big square, and I was only trying to round you off. Now, look here. Come in, come in. Well, I found her. What? I'd like to have a few words with you, Professor. Easy now, Sherry. I like this boy. He's my kind of people. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, Sherry, I've got to have a few words. It isn't Look. necessary. I didn't believe a word my daddy said about you being a fortune hunter, but I believed every word your secretary said, and I'm afraid our engagement's off. 
Why, you're nothing but a little old fake, Professor. Don't you dare say that about Alex. That's right. Now, you leave him alone. But he is, honey. Pretending to be the shy, bashful type. Why, your brother's known around the water cooler as the swinger of Magna Dynamics. <laughs> I ran the tapes of your last three years for it, too. <laughs> was your computer smoking? Why, you've got girls by the dozen. Alec, you do? No, no, not by the dozen. I have a few here, a few there. Thanks very much, Miss Malloy. Buy checks. <laughs> Come on along now, Daddy. We gotta find you another son in law. But honey, you'll never find a boy like this. A scientific wheel and deal and fortune hunter. <laughs> Bunny, I um what are you looking at me that way for? And I was trying to get you out of your shell. You made a fool of me, that's what you did. No, no. And Bunny. I'm leaving. Bunny, you're staying right here. No, I'm not. Bunny. Put that suitcase back. I can't pack it in the closet. Well, you're not going to pack it at all. Now, stop acting like a kid. I am a kid. Now, yeah, don't be kid. I should be dopey. I have a brother that's a nut. Whoops. Now, young lady, you watch your language, or you're going to be grounded for the next three weeks. Don't you dare talk to me like that, Alex Tate. You're not my father. Yeah, that's right, honey. I'm sorry I said that. No, no, no. It's it's, uh, it's my fault. I'm not your father, and I shouldn't act like one. But I am your brother. And I do love you very much. I love you very much, too. I guess I just cut off on the wrong foot. Yeah, but well, we both did. You were trying to do something for me, and I was trying to do something for you. For me? Yeah, I... I wanted to establish the right image. I had it on very good authority, a computer, in fact, that teenage girls are very prudish when it comes to their older brothers. <laughs> that's kooky. Who wants an older brother that's a square? I'm glad you are the way you are. We just don't know each other too well yet, do we? But we will. You give me a chance, I'll catch on. Um, mm? do you think there'll ever be a machine to help grown-ups understand teenagers? Maybe. But I got a hunch it'll take a long time to perfect. <laughs> Come on. About dinner, young lady. I know a pizza parlor that really swings. <laughs>